Hi everyone, welcome to my new channel. My name is Ninky and I've just recently started my manga collecting journey. I've been lurking on MangaTube for a while and thought it would be nice to join the community and track my journey. I've always loved anime and though I've never really read manga since I was younger, I've always been really into books. With the recent lockdowns in Sydney, I started reconnecting with things that brought me joy and really got sucked into manga. I don't really have friends that I can talk to about manga so I'm hoping that we can be friends and I'm really looking forward to getting to know all of you. So that being said, this is my haul for October. Grab a cup of tea or something sweet and let's hang out. This first package is from Booktopia, which if you're not based in Australia, is an online book retailer. I was surprised to find that they actually have a pretty wide selection of manga available at pretty good prices. So this first volume that I picked up is Homie by Junji Ito. I got the stunning hardcover omnibus edition, which will match my Uzumaki perfectly. I really love the cover art on all of these volumes. After I read Uzumaki, I was really craving some visceral, scary horror, and this came really highly recommended. From what I know, it's about a girl or spirit or succubus that never dies. Oh, the tale is old as time. I really loved Ito's surrealist disturbing style, so I'm really keen to read this and sort of see how this kind of story merges with it. Next up is another package from Booktopia. As you can see, the next thing I picked up is the hardcover collector's edition of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Short interlude from Lentil, who thought she would come and join us. I watched the movie for the very first time recently, and I fell in love with the world building and the story. If you're not familiar with it, I definitely recommend watching the movie. It has that wonderful 80s anime nostalgia to it, and it's really good. Oh, that's a shame, it came a bit bumped in the mail. So this edition is two very large hardcovers. It also comes with this little poster of Nausicaa and her little fox squirrel. It's actually double-sided. I didn't show you guys the other side, but it is double-sided. Okay, back to the story. These giant warriors destroyed the planet thousands of years ago, and it's essentially a wasteland with these poisonous forests and insect monsters that are all part of a sea of decay that's encroaching on the last remaining groups of humans. The story follows Nausicaa, who's a princess of a village by the sea, but she's exploring the forests and she's empathetic towards the creatures that live in it. The anime was really beautiful and the world had so much depth to it, so I'm really excited to be diving back into this. And these volumes are so beautiful and, and really nice to touch, so I think they'll be really enjoyable to read. The front of the volumes have these really great color art pieces and they've got these maps that show you how big and rich the world that Miyazaki created is. I don't know what you guys got from the movie. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and interpretations, but I feel like there was this message that you need to respect and live peacefully within nature and that if you mistreat it, it sort of comes back at you. Apparently the movie is only like a small portion of the manga, which makes me so excited to dive back in. Another short interlude from my other cat, Tofu, while I get some other volumes that I hauled. I'll start with some online orders and the one that I'm reading at the moment. That is volume one of The Flowers of Evil by Shuzo Ashimi. This initially piqued my interest because the spines are just stunning. It's a psychological thriller, I guess. It's uncomfortable and angsty and dark, and I kind of can't look away from it. At the time that I'm getting around to editing this, I've already ordered the next three volumes. It's about a high school boy called Kasuga who has a huge crush on this girl, Saiki, who's that perfect high school girl, you know, pretty, smart, popular. The other character is Nakamura, who is odd. That doesn't seem like the right word, but we'll go with odd. 
and it all kind of revolves around her mission to bring out what she sees as the true self of Kasuga and all those dirty, confused human emotions and compulsions. I'm really liking it so far, I'm not too far in, but I'll keep you guys updated with how I go. Next up is the new Rumiko Takahashi series, Mao. I picked up volume one. Inuyasha was one of my favorite animes, and I think one of my first anime when I was growing up. So when I saw Takahashi had a new series, I really wanted to try it out. The series does have a similar vibe. It involves a girl who travels back in time and encounters an exorcist called Mao, who saves her from a yokai. When she gets back to her time, she's gained abilities, and I think it follows her going back to the past and involving herself with Mao and like some murders that he's investigating. Moving along, I also have a big stack of Kamisama Kiss by Julietta Suzuki. I watched this anime when I was younger and had no idea that the OVAs existed and had been really unsatisfied with the way that the series ended. I rewatched it recently and watched the OVAs and just... I love this series and the characters. It's hard to get at the moment, so I'm planning to gradually pick up what I can find, especially because from what I know, the OVAs finish up around volume 18, so there's a good like seven-ish volumes that continue the story. If you've never heard of Kamisama Kiss before, it's a shoujo that follows Nanami, who is a high school student who lives with like her deadbeat slash absent dad and is evicted from her home. She saves this stranger in the park from a dog and he tells her that she can stay at his home and kisses her on the head. When she gets there, it's a shrine and she finds out that this stranger was a land god and that he's bestowed his powers on her and she has to live at the shrine and be the land god. There are some spirits that live there to protect the shrine or guard it and there's also the god's familiar, Tomoe, who is a fox demon. It's really great and I highly recommend it if you're wanting good classic supernatural shoujo fun. Okay, then moving across to things that I picked up in person. First up is Chainsaw Man by Tatsuki Fujimoto. My partner picked this up, but from what I know, it's about a guy who kills devils for the Yakuza to pay off his debts and has a dog with a chainsaw head that helps him do that. And he ends up merging with his dog and becomes a chainsaw devil. It seems fun, so I'll see how my partner likes it and maybe I'll give it a go. Then we have Orange by Ichigo Takano, which is really ground zero for this manga collecting compulsion. It's a shoujo manga with time travel elements. It's really sweet and super addictive. It has one other volume and then I think another series called Orange Future. If you're not familiar with it, Orange is about a girl, Naho, who receives a letter from herself in the future relating to this new transfer student in her class. And it's about her making sense of the letter and her and her friends' relationships with this boy. Moving along, we have Witch Hat Atelier by Kamame Shirahama. It follows a girl who lives in a world with magic in it, but she wasn't born with the, I guess, gift, um, despite wanting to be a witch. She's unmagical and makes witches hats. I think she then encounters someone who challenges her understanding of magic and she goes on an adventure to become a witch. It sounds super fun and I'm Kind of hoping that I'll pick this up soon. I also got The Promised Neverland. I've read the first volume and I've also picked up the next two. I'm really liking it so far. I wasn't super sure to start with, but it really exceeded my expectations, so I'm keen to read a bit further and see how it develops. The story follows a group of kids. The main three are 11. The only one I can remember off the top of my head is Emma, oh, and Norman. Um, and all the other kids are under 11. They live in an orphanage in the countryside and they are taken care of by this woman. I think they call her mum. I feel like the twist in the first volume is pretty significant, but what I'll say is that they find out that things aren't what they seem and that they need to figure out how to escape. Otherwise, they're all gonna meet a pretty gruesome death. It's all about how they respond to that and then what they do next. I'm going to keep seeing how it unfolds, and then I definitely want to try the anime, which I've heard really good things about. The next one I'm super excited about, and that is Monster by Naoki Urasama. Mangatube actually put me onto this, and the premise is totally my thing. But I didn't think I was actually going to be able to pick this up until the eventual big post-COVID restock happened, as it's been out of stock everywhere. 
but I was in Kinokuniya on a lunch break the other day and it was just sitting there with volume two. I spent way too much money on manga recently, but I had to get them. So if you don't know what Monster is, frankly, I don't know how much help I'm gonna be as I've tried not to read too much about it. I really wanna go into this fresh and experience it as it comes, if that makes sense. But at a high level, it follows a surgeon who's working in Germany and it's set sort of in the 1980s, 1990s, like end of Cold War kind of period. But from what I understand, it's about him and a former patient that turns out to be a serial killer. I am so, so excited to start reading this. Then moving on to the one manga that I picked up from Dimmicks in person, and that's Uzumaki from Jinji Ito. As I mentioned before, I've already read this. I got through it in a couple of days, mostly because I kept putting it down. That's because one, it was super unsettling and I had a lot of ugh, far out moments and too, because some of the imagery is so surreal and fantastic that I kind of wanted to let it like stew and, and sink in. I really enjoyed this and it's inspired me to pick up some more horror manga. So if you have any recommendations, please, please let me know down in the comments. In terms of what Uzumaki involves, it follows a town that's cursed by the concept of the spiral, so the shape. And personally, I think you should only know that going into it. Short interlude while I grab a couple more things. First up are a couple of cheap random finds that I got at an op shop, which is kind of like a charity shop. So this is Vampire Game, the first volume. It's about a vampire king who was defeated by a human king and reincarnated into like a little cat creature. And he wants to take revenge on the reincarnated form of the human king. I don't know too much about this, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts because I might give it a go at some point. I also picked up, I don't know how you guys pronounce this, but X1999. It's done by Clamp, which was one of the only reasons I picked it up. That and it was really cheap. It's set at like the end of days in 1999, so the cusp of the new millennium. It follows a psychic who comes home to Tokyo after he's been away for a while, and he's meant to face his destiny and save the world and all that. If you know anything about this manga, please let me know what you think. I'm probably not super keen to pick this up anytime soon, but I'd be interested to know what the vibe is. The other thing I picked up from the op shop is Arisa. I got volumes one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I've already powered through the first three and enjoyed it. So I had to order the fourth, which means I've kind of stopped. Basically it follows a high school girl called Tsubasa, who is a twin and her twin is called Arisa. They live apart because I think their parents are separated, but they arrange to meet up and reunite. And Tsubasa impersonates her sister at her school to see what her life is like. And she comes home that afternoon and is amazed that her sister is like this popular, smart, amazing class president, school captain type. Whereas I think Tsubasa is kind of described more as like a delinquent. That afternoon though, Arisa basically does this whole things aren't what they seem, and she attempts suicide by falling out of a window. So the story follows Tsubasa after that, wanting to understand what drove her sister to do that, and unpacking all of the secrets that sort of surround Arisa and her classmates. It has this kind of fun CW teen thriller show vibe about it, like Pretty Little Liars, which is actually really addictive, and, and it's light, and it's super fun. Then moving on to things I picked up via Facebook Marketplace. First up is Natsume's Book of Friends. The first volume has been out of stock everywhere, so I was lucky to actually find someone selling it secondhand. It's about a high school boy named Natsume who can see and communicate with spirits and demons, and he's kind of alienated because of that. His parents died when he was young, and he's been passed from relative to relative. His grandmother also had the sight, and the story sort of kicks off when he learns that she also passed something down to him called the Book of Friends, which is essentially a book of demon names. I've already bought a bunch of the next volumes, although quite a lot of them are out of stock, but yeah, I'm really keen to get going on this one. I also picked up Parasite Volume 1 by Hitoshi Iwaki, which I don't know a lot about, but is one of those mangas that I'm aware of and interested by. 
This was kind of an opportunistic haul. So what I know is that it takes place in a world where there are these alien creatures that can invade human bodies and take control and, and change their form. Our main character is the subject, I think, of a failed invasion where the alien only takes control of his arm and they coexist in his body. If you've read this one, definitely let me know what you thought and if you think I should dive into it. Then the last thing I hauled was volume one of the Death Note Black Editions. I, like most people I think, am aware of Death Note, but I think I, I'm ready to give it a go now. So it follows a college student who discovers this notebook that was dropped by a demon, Ryuk, and basically if he writes a person's name in it and imagines their face, the person dies. I've heard a lot of praise around this manga and the protagonist being an anti-hero and this conflict that you have as you empathise with him but also watch him become a psychopath. So. What I think I'm going to do is pick up some more volumes and then I'm going to give it a try. That's it for today. If you think I should get stuck into any of these in particular, or if you have any recommendations for what I should pick up next, please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Have a good day.